thank you. Thanks everyone for coming. Sorry we're a bit late. Um, try and pack everything in as quickly as we can. Not so quick. Okay, so today I'm talking about ethics beyond the plate. And I just want to... Why does that not work now? Thought it worked before. Um, I just want to go over my background first, quickly. Um, so I went vegetarian in um, 1994 when I was at school and um, I was vegetarian for two years before I went vegan and I went vegan um, once I found out about the dairy and the egg industries because I went vegetarian originally um, when I worked out the difference between life that once was and the death I was about to consume and I didn't want to consume any other people or any other living beings and um, that's why I went vegetarian and um, I didn't want anyone to get hurt or harmed just because of me and um, then I found out about the dairy and the egg industries and those industries are worse than death sometimes for the animals so that's why I went vegan in 1997 so next January I will have been vegan for 20 years and um, I have a website called vivalavegan.net so I hope you've heard of it if not why not what's wrong um, so check it out and it started in 2005 to promote my recipe calendars and that's how my website started and it just grew over the past 10 or so years and people said oh you should do a blog or you should put some recipes up or you should interview this person or you should put your speech up that you did it so and so and I thought okay cool and I just really rolled with it and kept going and so there's over 10 years worth of information on there so make sure you have a look heaps of articles and blogs and interviews and videos how to and um, yeah I've been giving talks about the vegan lifestyle for 10 years and my job like I'm a speaker and a consultant um, and a trainer for online marketing and etiquette and things like that as well so I've released a few books my fourth book I just released almost a year ago on vegan athletes and that has over 100 vegan athletes from all over the world, all disciplines. And I'd like to point out Nick over here. Nick, just wave to everyone. He's one of the athletes in it from ice hockey. And um, I've also written many other books and e-books and been featured in others as well. And I just today I just want to talk about things that go outside of food and outside of health because I think that nowadays, a lot of people, when they hear about veganism, that's the things they think about. And I want you to think about things beyond that today. And um, if, you, if you haven't noticed the past, say, five years in particular, a lot, of, a lot more people are talking about veganism and the term vegan. And a lot more people are claiming that they're vegan. And if you have a look online, a lot of the searches focus on health and they focus on diet. And, the, and this is mostly coming from mainstream media as well. So a lot of other people do share and create other things that don't relate to health and diet, but that seems to be what most people are aware of or think about. And there's also a lot of um, terms that relate to health and diet. So like for example, you know, you've got raw vegan and there's heaps of other terms as well. I've heard one recently called vegan. Has anyone heard of that? It's a vegan who eats eggs, but that's not a vegan, by the way, because um, vegans don't eat anything from animals at the very least. And um, the mainstream media also focuses on middle class, mostly white and thin females in particular. And that's a bit boring, I think, as so many other people in the world. And um, over the past 20 years since I've been vegan, I've noticed a lot of changes. And some good, some not so good. And um, back in the day when I went vegan, you really had to give up things. I had to give up ice cream, I had to give up chocolate. And now I still have that sort of um, scarcity mentality when I go and see vegan cake. I'm like, oh my God, I have to have this vegan cake because I don't know when I'm going to get it again. But I'll get, I'll get it the next day if I have to. So, you know, have to, I'm still trying to work on that. 
And um, if I met someone 20 years ago who told me they were vegan, I knew exactly what that meant. I knew that they cared about animals, that um, they were, you know, were probably on the same path with a few things and thinking about things in a similar way. Nowadays, it's a bit hard when someone tells me that they're vegan. I sort of, I'm like, what does that mean? What, what sort of vegan are you? And there's so many different shops and products and businesses around that are vegan or are claiming that they're vegan or have vegan options at the very least. And it's so easy nowadays to go vegan and most importantly, it's so easy to stay vegan. And like I said, the term vegan has been used a heap more nowadays and it mostly focuses on what people eat or what they do not eat and um, focuses on things like weight loss and control, allergens and you know I've got a friend that always tells me every time she goes somewhere to eat and she'll say I asked for vegan food and they said oh no but we've got gluten free and she gets so upset every time and um, because in case you're not aware a veganism doesn't have anything to do with gluten free and so a lot of the things in the mainstream media are focusing on allergens like gluten-free, egg-free and dairy-free. And all those food terms that exist now like the high-carb, low-fat, the paleo-vegans, the raw-till-four vegans, all that sort of stuff. And today I'm not going to have much time to really go in depth into a lot of things. I gave a similar workshop at ICAS on Friday and um, check that out if you've never heard of it, the Institute for Critical Animal Studies. And um, I just want you to think about some things beyond just food and I want you to maybe learn some new words. If you're not sure of what some of the words mean, I really want you to do your own research and find out some more things. And I think instead of using the term vegan in mainstream media, the term should be plant-based because there's a lot of other things that have to do with veganism that's not related to diet. And I know that words and meanings change over time. I know that and that's, that's fine whether or not I agree with that. But um, I find it hard sometimes when I have much more in common with someone who's a meat eater and who, who is interested in social justice issues than I do with someone who's a vegan who just wants to lose weight and look hot in a bikini. So um, in case you're not aware, a vegan is someone who does not consume all these different things here. So animal flesh, animal secretions, animal products and byproducts. But the most important part of that whole slide is it's not just a diet. And I'd really like for you to get into the habit of whenever someone focuses on diet or food that you say, oh, but did you know there's other things that go along with that or there's other ethical issues. And um, the definition that comes from Donald Watson, who's from the UK Vegan Society, he's the one who coined the term vegan. And he says, just down the bottom here, that it's a way of living that seeks to exclude as far as possible and practical all forms of exploitation of and cruelty to animals for food, clothing and any other purpose. And so some other non-dietary areas include like not using animals for clothing, for cosmetics, household goods, for testing or for entertainment. So as a vegan, I would choose not to support anything that would harm animals, not just how, you know, eating them or not, but how they're being used and abused in other ways. So veganism, it's a set of ethical guidelines that many people, including myself, commit to. And we're committing ourselves to these ethics. And there's so, so many reasons why people go vegan. How many people here today are vegan, actually, by the way? So we've got a few here. We'll work on the rest of you, hey? And um, so there's many reasons to go vegan, many reasons to stay vegan. And here are some of them that I've listed here. So I went vegan originally for animal rights and ethics issues because I don't agree that we should be using and abusing animals in any way. Um, but there's other things like health, environment, human and labour rights, feminism and social justice issues. 
And so for me, yeah, veganism encompasses everything that I believe in and I stand for. It's consciousness raising, non-oppression, non-objectification and anti-consumerism. And yeah, I went vegan for animal rights, but there's many other reasons that I, I agree with nowadays. So I've been involved in the feminist and environmental movements as well. And now I'm interested in how social justice intersects or how it relates with veganism and animal rights. So it's my way of leading by example to promote peace, love and compassion to others. And I like talking about it too. And so veganism is a really great way of putting your compassion into action, living in line with your beliefs, leading by example, and showing others how we want our world to be. Leading by example is one of the best ways to make these changes. And I really want you to think about the reason why you're vegan or the reason that you have certain ethics or morals that guide you in your life. And I really want you to think about some other reasons or beyond those things because the more reasons you have for something, the, the less likely you are to break away from those sort of things. And I find that the more reasons you have, um, the more you're interested in, the more you can talk to different types of people about things as well. So, um, vegans don't use, abuse or exploit any animals whatsoever for any reason, but I think more focus needs to be on the things that relate to what we do or do not eat. Who likes puffins? Just love puffins, little puffling. Anyway, so veganism is just one step. It's really important, very, very necessary, but it's still just one step. And um, there's so many great organisations and groups and make sure you have a look at them all that are here today in particular. And I don't necessarily agree 100% with any groups that exist, but you can still learn from these groups, you can still get involved, you can still share the information that these people create. And, um, and I'd really like you to think about doing your own research. Don't just believe what I'm saying just because I'm saying it. I want you to look outside of the square. I want you to do your own research. Think about how we can all learn more and do better and become better examples of compassion in action. And so I just want to um, talk about intersectionality. Has anyone heard of that term before? So a few people here have. And so just to like, bring it down to this basic sort of understanding of it, it's when social justice movements link to each other. So how they can work together, how we can learn some things from each other. And I really think that we need to be learning from other groups and working out how we can all work together to make some changes. And some examples of intersectionality are at the bottom here, and they can address things like racism, sexism, speciesism, homophobia, ableism, classism, ageism. If you're not sure of those words, I suggest you have a look at what they mean or how they could relate to you. And the vegan diet can be really healthy. And um, these are the four food staples here. Whole grains, fruits and veg, nuts and seeds, beans, legumes and pulses. But now there's a lot of not so healthy vegan foods. I'm sure you've eaten some that are here today. I know I have. And um, there's also a lot of restrictive or controlling um, eating that people do under the guise of healthy eating. So, um, and there's just, I just have a look at some of those vegan diet words there, like the vegans and the low fat raw. There's so many different people that eat different vegan diets within the vegan term as well. And so I just want you to think about a few things today. I'm just going to ask you some questions and just have a think about them, maybe go home and you know um, think about them a bit more. So when I mention those things that you know veganism can be healthy, but maybe it's not that healthy for people anymore. So should veganism still be promoted as a healthy diet? Should it be promoted as a cure-all? 
And what can we do to encourage people to be more flexible within a vegan diet? Because if you're eating no oil, no sugar, things like that, you're really not going to be able to stick with that long term. And we want people to be able to commit to this sort of lifestyle long term. Um, and how can we show that there's all these different types that exist? Um, in the environmental impacts of um, a non-vegan diet in particular, I'm sure a lot of you are aware of them, but in case you're not, here's just a few things about um, the animal products and how they're quite inefficient as a food source. The scale of the industry is massive. Um, just the land clearing, degradation, greenhouse gases. And there's a guy called Paul Marnie, and he writes some really great articles. He's written a lot about environmental stuff on my vegalavegan.net website. And um, he writes for some other publications as well. So I suggest you check him out. And obviously, if you're eating a vegan diet, you're not contributing to any of these things. But some things I want you to think about is what about your vegan food? Have you thought about where that comes from? Have you thought about um, the growing, producing and the packaging processes of it? Um, how far has your favourite vegan packaged food travelled? What about food miles? Have you thought about these sort of things? What about food scarcity, food security? Are you um, supporting in-season, non-GMO, organic, locally grown produce? And you know, people are humans too. We need to remember these sort of things a lot of the time. We're not supporting, you know, unskilled, undocumented workers um, when they work in horrific conditions. Um, so just think about ethics and conditions involved in some of the products that you use or the clothes you wear, and um, make sure that people that you know the the brands and the people that are making things for the brands are getting paid a fair wage some other things like feminism human rights reproductive rights i won't get through much today um but you know i want you to think about you know feminists were against object the objectification and commodification and about we're against being seen as a product so what about you know, some people defend one type of body at the expense of another body. Is that okay? And should we be using different types of bodies to promote veganism? Um, I want everyone to think about people being able to access different spaces, being able to have transport and being able to attend meetups, being comfortable in spaces being able to come and enjoy being in a space as well. And make sure that everyone can understand what's being communicated as well. It's really important. Um, I just want to mention um, that um, this is like, I normally talk about this for a lot longer, so we're really sort of skipping through quite a bit. But there's a lot of issues with black vegans being used as props in um, marketing for the vegan movement, animal rights movement. And it's not necessary for us to be using one group or one section of people at their own expense to promote something else. Some books to check out, Jodie Comparison, Eternal Treblinka, if you like. Um, some websites also to check out. Um, and I really want us to always keep learning and learn from other groups. So the LGBTQI community is a really good example because there's a lot of people who are allies for them and they're not necessarily gay, they're not necessarily lesbians, but they're welcoming allies to that movement. So I want you to think about how we can be welcoming other people that aren't necessarily vegan into our movement to help promote it. Um, and um, think about being inclusive. Vegans are one to two percent of the population and um, how can we find out, how can we plant seeds to um, get other people to be aware of these sort of things and to get people to be motivated. Um, so we 
where vegans do not only just care about non-human animals, so we need to think about humans and learn more about each other and um, learn and know that all systems of oppression need to be changed. And I really want you to think about, in particular, being nice online, because everyone's quite mean to each other online. And um, we need to be, you know, thinking that just because, you know, you might be the only person that someone knows as a vegan. So you have to be really, really aware of this, and you have to be aware that what you're doing reflects the whole of the movement. So I want you to think about that and be more aware of those sort of things. They're my top 10 tips for online etiquette. And um, I just want you to think about what language you use when you're promoting veganism. So these are some, some things. Like, are you being positive or negative? Are you encouraging or are you discouraging people? Are you being empathetic or judgmental? Are you preaching or are you teaching? What about language you're using in regards to race and are you being racist with the way you're speaking about, say, Japan and dolphins or whales, China and dog meat, Middle East and live trade? And what about words that you use? They might be trigger words that might truly upset someone. So, say, using words like slave, rape, concentration camp. And what about giving unsolicited health advice to someone who's terminally ill or someone who is disabled and saying that they'll be cured if, if they go vegan? And all of these examples I've seen on many occasions online in particular. I want you to do your own research. Don't just believe me. Investigate more, read more. You know, the people that are the loudest don't mean they're the most correct or you know the most educated sometimes you know years ago if you had a qualification people looked up to you nowadays you just pose in a bikini or do some youtube videos and everyone thinks you know what you're talking about so um i want you to lead by example and be consistent that's the best advice i have after 20 years just lead by example be consistent and um be the best version of yourself and um if you want to connect with me Here's all my information, my vivalavegan.net website and all the social media channels that go along with that. And my Lee Chantel website here and all the social media channels that go with that. We breezed through a heap today, so I hope you have learned something from that today. And if you have learned something, please share it with someone else. And um, thank you Living Green Festival and all the volunteers for today. Thanks guys.